What is up everybody? Derek here from DW Designs and today is going to be a special video. We are going to be taking our very first welds here in this shop since we moved here. I am so excited. We ran the wires this last weekend and I can't wait to start projects around here and on people's vehicles and stuff like that again. I miss it so much and I know I've been MIA guys but man it feels good to be back. So all right guys let's dive into this all right so before we dive into what we had to do and everything here to the shop to get it ready to actually use the welder here i'd like to say thank you to the people that have come out here to help me rewire the shop i could not have done it without you guys it means the world to me and it is nice to be back and to be able to do this again here in my own shop so thank you, Adam, my brother. Thank you, Trevor, my longtime best friend. Thank you also to Brent and thank you, Micah. Those are the four people that have helped me get this done and get this accomplished this last weekend. So thank you guys so much for your help. Like I said, I will never be able to repay you. It means the world to me. All right, so for those of you who are wondering what we had to do, we actually had to rewire the whole entire shop in its whole entirety. We could not use the original wiring because the original wiring was only set up for single phase 110. Now we're still running single phase. However, though, we needed 220. So where does that all start at? That starts here at the main breaker panel here that runs into the shop. We had originally in here Romex wire that was ran out from the house to the shop and that was not worthy of being able to handle the load of what we are going to be doing with this welder. So we had to rewire the whole entire thing which was indeed a nightmare as it sounds and it originally shouldn't have been too bad. However, let me put my sunglasses on here. So, generally speaking, it shouldn't have been too hard to do. Reason why is because if you look here at the shop, we have a pipe that is ran down into the ground and all the way over to the house over there. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's stupid easy. Just pull the old wire out and put a new one in. Just simple as that. Well, fortunately, that was not the case. They, whoever they was, did not run a pipe in the ground all the way to the house. Now this caused obviously several problems. One, we had to dig up the old wire. And two, we had to put in the new wire. Now, this dirt here in Tennessee is mostly clay. And with it being clay, it gets extremely hard to work with and can even get in its own way work hardened. What I mean by that is, is you stick a shovel in there, it compacts it more, and then it makes it even harder to dig it up. So it took us a bunch of hours, probably three hours, just to dig this little thing from the house all the way to the shop. And that was because the dirt was so hard. Even the trencher that my friend Micah bought, uh, not bought, but brought, didn't want to cut into this dirt because it was so hard to run. Now, this in itself is a big hiccup, okay? It is a big, it was a big stopping point for us where we had to rethink about how we're going to do this. So... What we ended up doing was we ended up breaking up this concrete here, not breaking it, but cutting it all the way through so that way we can go ahead and lift the concrete plates and dig through there rather than having to dig underneath the concrete, which would have made it even tougher to do. So that took some extra time, but the part that really stuck us in the back with a dagger, so to speak, was this here where it was supposed to go into the house okay we thought originally it went in the house in the wall shot over and then into the garage because this used to be a garage and then into the main breaker panel which i'll take you guys 
there right now. Now, rather than that being the case, which is what we thought it was, we did not do our due diligence by finding and locating the original wire and then back tracing it. So we had to actually go, because instead of the wire going through the wall into the panel, instead it actually went up and went through the attic and then dropped down into the new panel. Well, not new panel, but panel. This is the new breaker. So we had to feed the line down through here and then hook it all up and all that fun stuff. So that was the biggest hiccup and biggest problem that we ran into. Now, did we rebury the wire? Yes. Did I like the fact that we reburied the wire? No. I personally would have rather ran some uh, conduit down in there to rerun it through, but we were in a hurry to get it done because we only had one day to get it done which we did, but it was a lot of work. So we decided to rebury the wire. Now, I was reaff reaffirmed and reassured that the buried line would be okay because of the type of line that we have. And not only that, it's not buried super, super deep. So if we have to, we can dig it all back up, no problem, put a new conduit line in and rerun it from the house out to the shop, which, would not be that big of a deal, but at the same time it is. So as you guys can see here, it is not quite uh, buried there yet. And that is because I've been working on some final touches. So due to the fact that we had to run the wire up through the attic over and then drop it back down, we were short a few feet of wire. Now, this was a big problem because our measurements we originally measured were for 75 feet, which would have given us at least two foot on each end from the inside panel to the inside of panel over there if it was ran the way we thought it was ran, but it was not. So we came up short. We actually came up short by this much where this breakout box is here. So what we ended up doing is we ended up taking the same exact wire and we ended up splicing it together with some special electrical joint um, splice pieces that's kind of like a bolt, threaded bolt, but it, you know, you put it in on each side and then you tighten it down, then you electrical tape everything, and then you make sure that everything is separated really well. Now, we did talk to a couple of electricians already before we did it. One of them was my friend Brent that came out here and another one was I don't know who he is, but my friend Micah's friend, who's an electrician, said to use these. So that's what we did. We bought the certain specific ones he said to buy. We used those. And now the shop is running hot with electricity again because it was down for the day. It's got to leave it. All right. So back here in the shop here. Now. I haven't done much over on the other side of the shop, so excuse the mess over there. You're going to see a bunch of random stuff on the floor. There's still some stuff in here that needs to be put away as well. However, though, we just got done with this the other day, so I haven't had a chance to put everything away. But I'm excited, and before we jump into welding here, I want to tell you guys something. A big shout out to Micah. Thank you, bro for uh, giving this to me. He gave me this little mini lathe here. And it's a Vivor or a Vevor. I don't know how you technically pronounce that, but um, I'm kind of excited to play around with that. Uh, I used to use a great big one, as you guys know, at the shop of California. However, though, that one did not belong to me. That was another friend's, so that went back to him. However, though, this is, uh, I'm looking forward to playing with this. Uh, in fact, I probably might even put some uh, drivers on there and make it a little CNC um, late there. But anyway, that is completely off topic to this video, but I just thought I'd show you guys that. thought it was pretty cool, pretty nice of them. So anyway, let's uh, get into welding, you guys. Uh, I'm excited to do this. What we are working on today is this is a valley plate for the LS motors. 
And what it allows it to do is basically just bolt up in the valley of the LS engine so he can pick it up. And then this is the top part there, it goes just like that. I designed this in CAD and made this for him and he actually had it cut out uh, on the water jet from a friend of his that does uh, water jet cutting. So he did that, came out awesome. Um, his uncle did the logo in there, MFD, that's his business and uh, that came out really nice as well. So we're going to weld that up for him. And like I said, this is our very first welds here in the shop. I literally have not even welded nothing with it yet. I tested it, but I've welded nothing. So fingers crossed everything works good and uh, let's get into it. So everything is wiped down, ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some filler wire. Now, was it necessary to clean the outside edges and stuff? No, not necessarily, but I did it anyway just to get the sharp burrs off and so on and so forth. If he wants to make the uh, um, all the little water jet marks go away, I'll go ahead and allow him to do that and finish it however he wants it finished. But let's go ahead and get started with this thing. I'm super excited. So I'm going to go ahead and get that on there. And we're going to do our fur, very first tack weld on anything ever in this shop. So I'm super, super excited. I, I can't, words can't descri describe how excited I am right now. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is nice and tight up against one side. Actually, we'll go ahead and make sure it's kind of centered as best as possible here. Now, it's leaning, I know you guys can't see, but it's leaning this way right now, so I'm going to go ahead and tack it on the other side. If I don't move it. There probably was a little bit of sparks right there. That was from the, it's probably, it's not really, it is porosity, but it's from the slag on top of the metal surface here. So now we're back upright, but now we're laying in the opposite way. So we wanna go ahead and tack this side. still laying in this way now just a bit so we're gonna go ahead and grab the hammer and hammer that straight we may have to cut it not sure yet go ahead and check it with a square nice and square that way nice and square that way so let's go ahead and Add a few more tacks here. We're gonna make sure this is square. Perfecto that way. If I quit dropping the filler wire. Perfecto that way. So we'll just keep adding small tacks until we get it
Now I can't tell yet guys because I haven't reviewed the footage yet, but if you're seeing a small spark in the beginning, it's because it's blowing through this slag on top. So once it blows through, it becomes a nice clean weld. Let's go ahead and throw a tack on this side. I do recommend that you guys clean the slag off and I should have I should have spent the time to to do that but I'm just I'm so excited I can't wait. Still make sure this is nice and square. It is. So we'll go ahead and put our final tack right here. Still nice and square. perfectly square all the way across so now we're going to go ahead and weld the inside of this first before we dive into welding we're only going to do three one inch sections on each side and then the bottom will be fully welded because it doesn't need to be fully welded because we're going to try to prevent warping this plate and right now it's really really straight so we don't want to warp it so I'm gonna see if I can't figure out a way to hold this up here that'll work so on the bottom section guys what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld a little bit on this side and then a little bit on this side a little bit on that side just keep it nice and even all the way so that way you don't you're, you're, you're helping prevent warping. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna up the ante here to 150, to, or 250, sorry, 250 amps here, just to make sure that everything's working good. So if we blow any fuses, the lights are gonna go out. We're gonna go ahead and check for square here. Make sure that that weld did not pop it out of square here. And we're golden there and golden there. So we are good so far. We're still very, very flat, but we wanna keep it that way. So we'll go ahead and weld this side and then the other side. And we're just gonna keep bouncing around here, keep the temperature on the steel nice and cool. So as you guys just saw there, we started getting a little bit of porosity. If you guys didn't see it, there was. And what's happening is, is the gas is going into this really sharp corner over here and then blowing back up and out and that's where it's only really happening everywhere else it's nice and clean metal so it's welding really nice but it's just these corners where the gas is getting blown away is where the problem is still square still square all right we are golden to finish welding this
Alrighty guys, so we got to use the welder completely, no issues, no breakers were blown, wires did not get hot. So I am super happy that we got it done and it's now working. So let's check this out. So we got it all welded up. It's nice and flat. We also did a little bit of a weave weld down in here. I know there's some undercut here, but we're not gonna be capping this all the way because this needs to be perfectly flat. So since that's the case, we'll just leave it uh, divoted there just a little bit. But it is technically four passes. So you have one up this side, one up this side, one down the middle, and then the weave pass. So it should be plenty strong. We did not pump too much heat into it. We let it cool off in between. We are perfectly square here. So we got the square all nice and squared up there. So there is no issues there at all. And then on the bottom, it's nice and flat. There's no warping or anything like that. So I am super happy with this and I'm very excited to get back in the game because I miss it a lot. And then while this was cooling off in between, I went ahead and I made a little, just for fun, piece on the lathe, like a, a screw with a hole through it. Maybe for like a, who knows, maybe like a throttle cable. <laughs> who knows, but I just had some fun with the lathe and made this real quick in here and then turned it off here just a few minutes ago and I think it came out great. So if you guys want to see more videos on that, uh, message me in the comments down below. Let me know that you guys are interested in seeing more lathe videos. And I think that completes everything. So once again, thank you all to who have watched this video. Thank you guys for your support. And thank you again to the ones that have helped me do this project this last weekend. So anyway, Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed or learned anything, please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you can be notified of any future videos. And with that, guys, take it easy, have fun, be safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one.